The big question now, how will the tariffs that are about to be imposed impact the global economy? And for more on that, as well as how Asia handled the global financial crisis, let's bring in now Ryan Patel. He's a global business executive who has worked for publicly traded companies to startups, and he joins us live from Los Angeles. Welcome. Thanks, Jessica. So let's begin uh, with your reaction to the imposition of these tariffs. They're supposed to hit on the 24th of September, so next week. What are your thoughts on uh, the short-term impact and then the long-term impact on the global supply chain? Well, it's the the you know it's not the 25 percent, but the 10 percent hit that the U.S. did, and you know I think that will in the short term provide some implications and force China to probably may not have this meeting that they were supposed to have this week. You know, China had came out over the weekend if there was any tariffs that was going to happen from President Trump that they would call this off and have an attack plan to go back. So, you know, unless something miraculously happened until the 24th, you know, I, I think China is going to have, uh, they're going to attack back. But what's really interesting to me is that the 25 percent hit of tariffs is going, uh, that President Trump said today was 10%. January 1st. That 10 percent today, but the rest of the 25 percent right, is going next to next year and right after holiday season. So obviously consumers are not going to feel that pricing until next year. So he's buying some time uh, until until that for the full effect. But then what are your thoughts about the supply chain? Because, you know, as we sat through those U.S. trade representative hearings, what we often heard was, yes, uh, the tariffs will probably make us move production to other places in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, um, Laos, uh, Malaysia. But we're hand in glove with our Chinese partners here in the West. So we're going to just move the whole operation there. And it, it certainly doesn't change the interconnectedness of our two economies. Correct, and it's not going to change anytime soon. You think about supply chain, it's not going to be done in six months. Obviously, there's contracts and, and prices that are set that are in place. Obviously, the U.S. and China are inter interconnected. I think um, with this strategy that going back and forth, they both need each other. It's very clear to me. Obviously, this is a strategy that's being used. Now, the question becomes, how much dependent on certain industries can they can each country not be able to to move away from each other? And I think that is will be the key point here. Is it going to be tech? Is it going to be automobiles? And obviously, you know, when they're in this middle of this trade war, it becomes to have a plan B, option B to be able to have this. You know, Ryan, we just came off the China ASEAN uh, Summit uh, Expo in China, and we saw the increasing interconnectedness and investment between uh, China and the ASEAN countries. I, I wonder, um, going forward, especially because there's this competing trade agreement, the RCEP, that's very well maybe signed in the coming months, do you think we're just going to see a speedier exit of uh, production from China to Southeast Asia? Yeah, I think China, you know, here's the thing. With the tariff that came in today, the move is back into China's court. What do they do next? It's not just about tariffs. It's about do they want to give up less borders, more licensings to to the rest of Southeast Asia? They've also made a big investment in Africa as well. So I see that they were putting these seeds across the globe. And again, specifically in Asia, they can really make a play and, and speed up the ramp if they wanted to open borders to be able to combat some of, um, some of the income that they may be losing. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the global economic crisis and the impact on Asia more broadly. Um, one thing we've noted here at CGTN is just uh, how strong the economies in Asia have, have been throughout this whole period. The economy certainly slowed, but they didn't grind to a halt. Uh, what is your take on what explains that? You know, you kind of mentioned it before, but I think the consumers and supply chain, the consumer patterns and obviously the middle class in some of these countries obviously was growing. And I think when, when people were looking at Southeast Asia as a hub, as places, where is the next up and coming country? Was it Vietnam? Was it the Philippines? Was it Thailand? I think, and, and, and can't forget about India in there as well. I think when people were starting to see that they needed to have a headquarters in some of this region to be able to better serve the region, to be able to have a manufacturing plant, that's what's changed from 10 years ago, is that people are now investing uh, and, and, and putting long-term plans in the region, not just internally, but also externally, has made the region look a lot different. Ryan, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the role that China played in bringing us all back from the brink. Where do you think we'd be as a global economy if China didn't play the kind of role that it did uh, in terms of that stimulus that it put into the economies uh, after the global economic crisis? Well, at the end of the game, numbers speaks for itself, right? And, and you see the numbers that China had 
has have and the, the, the spending power and the consumer power and obviously the connectivity to the global world. I cannot, uh, cannot say this more that we are interconnected. And when you have the number one, number two economies going at it at each other, there is this long term effect. And we talk about rem remembering what happened 10 years ago during the financial crisis without either or without the support of both of them kind of helping each other out or more together, more globally together. You know, we all will suffer because we are interconnected when it comes to consumer spending, to trading, to even even supplying goods. Ryan Patel, live for us in Los Angeles. Come back sometime and visit us, would you? I will too. Thanks, Jessica. <laughs>